25 pointer coming up now. Here's the toss up. Pascal wrote Pensee, and Price wrote Perception. For 10 points, what philosopher wrote Parmenides? It's a tie. It's a tie. The answer is Plato. We'll go to another toss up question. Listen, and for 10 points, tell me, please, what is the principal instrument in this concerto? Agnes Scott Snow. Oboe. It is an oboe, yes, a concerto by Vivaldi. <laughs> All right, Agnes Scott, for a quick five points apiece, name the famous poem in which we find these characters mentioned. Mohammed Khan, the son of the Rasuldar. The Rubiat. The Rubiat. No, it's the Battle of the East and West by Kipling. The Widows of Asher. Are loud in their whales. The, it's the, the, the one about... It's the destruction, destruction of Sennacherib by Byron. How about Lars Porsena? No. Horatius is the answer, Macaulay's work. Fra Pandolf. <laughs> That's from my last Duchess, Robert Browning. Uh, Jesus and William Booth. We, uh, General, General William Booth enters heaven. heaven. Into heaven, yes, by Rachel Lindsay. That's right. Four or five points. Now you're playing for a 30 pointer. Here's the toss up. The same adjective is in the titles of works by Anthony Trollope, F. Scott Fitzgerald, George Santayana. Agnes Scott Snow. Great. No, five point penalty, and I'll repeat for Princeton. The same adjective is in the titles of works by Anthony Trollope, F. Scott Fitzgerald, George Santayana, and James Fenimore Cooper. For 10 points, what? Princeton, Kaler. Last. Yes, that's right, last. The last chronicle of Marset, the last tycoon, the last Puritan, and the last of the Mohicans. Okay, Princeton, the problem of free will has aroused much controversy down through the ages. For 10 points apiece, who were the famous philosophical or theological antagonists of each of the following writers on the subject of free will? Pelagius. That's St. Augustine. Erasmus. Martin Luther is the answer. How about Bishop Brummel? That's Thomas Hobbes. You're playing for a 25-point bonus question now. Here's the toss-up. His famous, his famous five points were total depravity, unconditional election, prevenient, and it... Agnes Scott Butler. Calvin. It was John Calvin, yes, for 10 points. Name the 16th century theologian. All right, girls. Sculptured reconstructions made by anthropologists show how prehistoric man may have looked. For five points apiece, what names were given to these men, shown in full face and in profile to the left? Will you take that, Captain, please? First, this man, whose scientific name means Southern Ape. He was first discovered in Betuanaland in South Africa. Australia? Omar Australis? No. No, what? No, no. Meridian something? Meridian something? Mer Meridian? His name is Australopithecus. How about this man, Homo erectus javensis, or Pithecanthropus erectus? He is commonly called after the Indonesian island on which he was discovered. Java man. Yes, Java man. Here's another Homo erectus. He was discovered in a cave in Asia and is believed to be the first man to use fire. Peking man. Peking man. Peking man is right. And this man is one of the earliest examples of Homo sapiens, or modern man. The first man to receive this name was found in, uh, by quarry workmen in Dusseldorf, yeah. Germany. Oh. These people are believed to have been widespread in Paleolithic yeah. Europe. Heidelberg? No, it's Neanderthal. And this man was a late Ice Age man. His people were the first known artists and created famous Cro cave paintings. Cro-Magnon. cro, -Magnon. cro -Magnon, yes, that's right. May we check the score, please, Matt? Princeton University, 60, Agnes Scott College, 100. Okay. There's the whistle to end the first half. And the score is what again, Matt? Princeton University, 60, Agnes Scott College, 100. Okay. In just a moment, we'll take time out and talk with the teams. The Alamo in San Antonio, Texas. One of the nation's most famous historic landmarks. Jim Bowie, Davy Crockett, William Travis, and many others gave their lives here in a valiant battle for independence. Here, too, the city of San Antonio and the General Electric Company have joined the Daughters of the Republic of Texas in a special project. In answer to the President's call to preserve the beautiful assets of our country, they've turned night into day at the Alamo with a special exterior lighting system designed and donated by GE. Outdoor lighting like this also extends the hours during which the public can visit our national shrines. And it's an example of how General Electric cares about making America a more attractive place in which to live. Now, more people than ever will remember the Alamo, just as it stood 130 years ago. 
As you know, here in the College Bowl, it's our custom to invite the visiting team to bring along a film of its campus. And now, to tell you about the films of Agnes Scott College, here is Karen Gerald. Thank you, Mr. Earl. Growing with the neighboring city of Atlanta, the economic and cultural center of the Southeast, Agnes Scott is likewise stimulated by the social and intellectual life of some 10 other colleges and universities in the Atlanta area. Our new fine arts building, with its exhibits and dramatic offerings, symbolizes the relationship of the college to the larger contemporary world. Today, Agnes Scott ranks among the first half dozen American women's colleges in endowment per student and consistently upholds an ideal of high academic achievement. Central for us is the life of our own campus community, its opportunities for creative achievement in the development of individual talent, and for independent investigation in library and science hall, the appeal to intellectual curiosity, the lively relationship between students and faculty, the commitment to the liberal arts. These, for 77 years, have inspired Agnes Scott students with a lifelong desire for excellence and useful service. All right, there's a brief look at Agnes Scott College. Thank you very much, Karen. Now, let's chat briefly with a team from Princeton University, starting with Jim Costman. Jim, tell us about yourself. What are you studying at Princeton? Well, I plan to major in philosophy, Mr. Earl. Plan to? That means you are in what year? I'm a sophomore. Uh-huh. Uh, what particular uh, branch of philosophy? In classical philosophy, principally. What do you think you'll do when you graduate? Well, I, after I graduate, I hope to go on to graduate school and teach on the college level. Okay. How about Captain Chernikov? Well, Mr. Earl, I am a junior in economics. Last year, I was a mathematics major, but I decided to switch departments and to apply my mathematical background to the study of theoretical economics. And after graduation, I am considering joining the Peace Corps for two years, after which I will return to graduate school with the eventual aim of a doctorate in economics. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Steve Kaler, how about you? I'm a freshman, Mr. Earl, and my choice of a major is rather uh, broad right now. It could be any place from English to biochemistry, so my choice of a career is likewise uncertain. Okay, good luck, whatever it is. And Frank Ward. Uh, Mr. Earl, I'm a senior in the Department of History, and I'm presently working on my thesis on the effects of the American Revolution on the legal profession in New Jersey. After graduation, I have to go on to law school, then enter the service, and then practice law. Okay. I'd like to point out here that Jim Kosman and Steve Kaler are National Merit Scholarship finalists, and Captain Chernikoff is an honorary National Merit Scholar. Okay, there's the whistle to start the second half with a score. Agnes Scott College, 100, Princeton University, 60. Now, teams, as you know, the next time that whistle blows, the game is over. Uh, if it should blow I, while I'm asking a question, I must stop. But if it should blow while you're answering, we'll allow you to complete that one answer or part. All set? You're playing for a 30-pointer. Here's the toss-up. If I said Goneril and Cordelia, you'd have to say Regan to complete the famous trio of sisters. For 10 points, what would you say if I said Peep Bo and Pity Sing? Agnes Scott, no. Nanny Poo? No. Can you take it, Princeton? The answer... Princeton, Chernikov. Yum Yum. Yum Yum is the answer. That's right. <laughs> Completing the trio of sisters of Gilbert and Sullivan's The Mikado. Okay, Princeton, Queen Elizabeth and Queen Juliana are among today's reigning queens. But for five points apiece, can you identify these queens who ruled quite a long time ago indeed? The first century British queen who led a savage and unsuccessful revolt against the Romans. Boadicea. She, yes, she committed suicide by poison. How did you say it? Boadicea. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Boadicea, that's right. Uh, the third century queen of Palmyra, who occupied Egypt and attempted to take over Rome's eastern empire. No. No. Zenobia is the answer. The beautiful queen who was the wife of Amenhotep IV. Uh, Nefertiti. Nefertiti. Yes. The Sabian queen who journeyed to Jerusalem purportedly to work out a trade alliance in the 10th century B.C. The queen of Sheba. The queen of Sheba, yes. The Tyrian princess who, according to legend, was left in the lurch by a man who is the ancestral hero of the Roman Dido, people. Dido. Dido, yes. The 16th century queen who was married to Francis II, Lord Darnley, and the Earl of Bothwell. Mary, queen of Scots. Mary, queen of Scots, yes. 